What's going on, fellas? Welcome back to the channel, man. It's your boy. And for today, I had a couple of the bros hit me up asking me to do a world event guide. Now, personally, I didn't feel like I needed to do one of these because the game mode itself, in essence, is very easy and straightforward. It's essentially just an endless wave of enemies constantly spawning. And your job is to basically go in and kill them as quickly as possible to collect as much points as possible to get agent tokens that you can then use to rank up your agent badge it's very very simple and very very straightforward but i guess i could give you guys some general guidelines as about to how i personally approach this game mode every single day right because this is something you want to definitely play every single day you only need to spend like six minutes total here right so yeah that's way faster than the amount of time you need to invest in something like world boss ultimate or shadowland so yeah so when it comes to world event there's four different windows every six hours is a new team that gets chosen and the teams are always chosen at random general rule of thumb if you see a tier three character that's basically a slam dunk so if you have three minutes jump in and all you got to do is make sure that you hit one million points However, if you don't see a tier three character and the characters that are chosen, you don't personally feel comfortable with them. What I generally do is sit back and wait and I look at the current MVP score. If that score is over 2 million, then that tells me that I should at the very least be able to get 1.5. But besides that, I generally wait to see what my Alliance members score and also what my friends score because the rewards that you get will also be dependent on the average of everybody that participates. So the battle grade, you want to make sure that that's as high as possible. If you get the maximum amount of rewards, you want to make sure that everybody else can also get the maximum amount of rewards. So I'm going to play this thing really quickly and I'm going to show you guys exactly what I mean because there's more to it than just coming in and playing by yourself. All right, so we're gonna bang this out really quickly with Captain Marvel. And literally all you gotta do is make sure that you get a million points. You don't have to play this game mode repeatedly for an hour. Like I see people literally playing this thing nonstop for an hour trying to get the MVP. Like seriously, you don't need to do that, boys. That's literally a waste of your time because you're not really getting anything special for being the MVP. And chances are you're just wasting an hour of your time that you can invest in other game modes like World Boss Ultimate, Shadowland, that kind of stuff, right? Marvel Future Fight as it is takes up so much time that wasting time here for an hour trying to get the mvp reward when literally all you got to do is play for three minutes and score a million points and then stop because you get nothing else you know what i'm saying is pretty pointless it would have been cooler if they made it so that if you get like two million you get more stuff like more agent tokens if you got like three million you got more stuff you know what i'm saying that would have been cool but if it's only one million there's no point literally no point in playing past that point like you can literally just kite around and just let the time run down or you can just have some fun with it right see how high you can score on your first run and then call it a day that's generally what i do you know what i'm saying like i'm not in here trying to push for mvp reward that's that's not it that's not it bro i'm not gonna waste my time and try super hard on a game mode that doesn't require it you know what i'm saying like Going up against Thanos, that requires a lot of effort, a lot of concentration. That requires a lot of time, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'd rather put the time in there because that makes more sense to me. But to each his own, I'm not sure how I got, well, I guess I got hit because that is not a full iframe, but it's fine. Like, if there was a way to check out right here, when I hit the 1 million mark, I would have definitely checked out already. But unfortunately, you still got to keep playing or you just kite around. Also, general rule of thumb, if the characters that get chosen are characters that stand in place a lot i personally would avoid using them in the fight right so if captain marvel was not a part of this three-man team then i would have definitely definitely have second thoughts about this team but like i said when you see a tier three character it's generally a slam dunk right even if it's ant-man <laughs> you know what i'm saying because most people with ant-man right now they're gonna rock the end game uni or the uh team suit 
So you can do good damage, you know and I'm saying basically all the tier threes are good enough to score a million points, even if they have defensive builds. That's also something you should look out for. Like if a character is not tier three, if they're tier two and they're rocking like a CTP of authority or like hold up like a regen or something, you should probably hang around, wait for like five, ten minutes, and see what the average score across the board is. Because yeah, if people don't have damage procs on their build you might struggle even with a character that's supposed to do a really good damage, right? So I'm gonna easily get like probably 3.3 .3 here if I kill some more mobs. Okay, let's, let's just kill these guys. Come on, there we go, 3.3, .3, that's it, that's it. That's good enough for me. You know what I'm saying? My ego is very easy to satisfy it. So then you get your maximum amount of rewards basically from just hitting that milli and you come back out here that's what i usually do and then you can take a look at the available rewards based on the people who have participated so far right so the average across everybody that's been participating is 9.9 .9, which means my available reward is 2475 tokens so almost maximum rewards right so that's what you want to aim for if you see a team that is set up and the average score looks like it's like 1.5 1.2 i would personally skip that world event because chances are the new players who are going to jump in and play this thing they're not going to get a million points and that's going to make the overall rewards for everybody much lower and these agent tokens are pretty rare so you want to make sure you get as much of them as possible right so that's something that you should keep in mind like i said if there's not a tier 3 character here if the character stands around a lot if a character has shitty survivability if you know they have shitty damage if you have time later skip it and come back to it because chances are you're going to be short changing yourself and you only are able to participate twice per day so after that you go to your inventory and you can collect these chests that you usually get and you'll get anything from a basic oh nice that's a legendary well superior whatever right you get anything from a basic to like a mythic i've actually gotten a mythic only ever gotten one right and they actually give a ton of xp we'll talk about that in a second how i spend okay so we're max on these points and they have an expiration time of 24 hours after you get them so you definitely want to make sure you spend them asap or at the very least collect them and spend as much as you can so you can collect everything that's sitting in your inventory so when it comes to your bonuses for me the most important thing in this game is not crystals. It's not crystals. Believe it or not, it's not crystals. It is gold. Gold is required for everything. Pretty much everything, boys. So whether you're a new player or a veteran, you can never have enough gold. All right? So first thing you got to max out is your gold acquisition. You want to make sure you max that out ASAP. Then if you're a new player, you should probably consider character XP acquisition just to max out as many characters as possible get into level 60 and then you can reset that get your points back and then put it into item acquisition give yourself some chance to get extra isos to put on your characters extra obelisks that kind of stuff right after you max out these two things which will take you a long time as you can see i'm still not maxed out on these two you should probably put it into max hp attack is not giving you that much and defense is damn near useless in Marvel Future Fight, you know what I'm saying? Very few characters have enough defense to be impacted that severely by this thing, right? So just keep that in mind. So you go over here and you wanna use up these items that you get from the world event. The basic doesn't give that much XP. You can see if I use all 15, barely, barely moving, right? Let's actually remove those because they're not giving that much. But if you use something like, let's say, intermediate or the advanced, or if you use, let's say, the rare, you get more. And if you use heroic, you get even more. And check this out, legendary, basically a full bar. And mythic is like three bars. And I'm saying it's crazy. However, you can also use ISOs, right? However, if you're a new player, not even if you're a new player, bro. If you've been playing this game for a while and you don't have an awaken, fully awaken ISO set on every single character in this game. Yes, Modoc, Hulkling included. You should not be using any of the gray ISOs or the red ISOs because they're required for absolutely every single ISO set that is currently in the game. They're required for everything. So you should not be using them because you're going to need them. The same thing goes for the blue ones. You should not be using them and the green ones. The only ones you should consider 
are these ones. These ones, there's only three ISO sets in the game that use these and frankly, very, very few characters need those ISO sets. You know what I'm saying? Drastic Density, Binary Power, and Hawksai. Those are the only three ISO sets of real value, right, that require these. So personally, these should be high up there on your list to get rid of. You know what I'm saying? If you're trying to make space in your inventory or if you just want to max out your hero badge so you can get more points, so you can get more stuff. However, the number one thing on your list when it comes to ISOs to get rid of should be the nimble ISO. These are the most worthless ISOs in the game. No character currently requires an ISO set that uses these, okay? See how many of them I have? And I've been using them every single time I feel like making some room in my inventory. I may even use some today, All right? Next is the chaotic ISO. Look at how many I have. You know how many I've used so far to do this? None. You know how many of these I've ever used to awaken another set? None. You know why? Because every single ISO set of real value in this game requires at least one of these, at least one of these in that set. So you should definitely never be considering these as options to get rid of unless you are a whale and you just shit money, okay? That's just my opinion. Next up is Urus. You should never be considering Urus either simply because there's only one way to grind for Urus in this game and it costs a lot of energy and getting an Uru to six star requires a lot of gold, a lot of Urus and also it's going to cost you a lot of heartache because you're going to fail a ton of time. Okay, so yeah, definitely should not be using Urus because on top of that, they don't really offer that much. And I'm saying, considering how much you have to sacrifice to get them to six stars. Because if I'm just using one of these fully awakened, nimble ISOs, I'm getting way more, way more. And these are garbage. Like, you know what I'm saying? So just keep that in mind, boys. Next up is custom gear. I have a custom gear on all but two characters in the game right now. All but two characters, Adam Warlock and Riri. Right, those are the only two characters I don't have a custom gear on. If you don't believe me, go check it for yourself. And I still would not use my custom gears for this process. One, they don't offer that much. Look at how little you're getting back. You know what I'm saying? And I still need to like reroll tons of obelisks for characters. And these are pretty, pretty hard to grind for. Well, not that hard to grind for, but seriously, it's so hard to get a perfect roll on a custom gear that I would never consider using these. Next is comic cards. You definitely, even though this looks very tempting, look at that, so much. You should never use comic cards unless you were a whale and you just shit money, okay? Because this is a very, 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 very hard thing to grind for. You know what I'm saying, boys? It takes like at least a week and a half, two weeks to build one mythic card if you're literally pouring all of your energy into Dimension Rift every single day. Yeah, it takes a lot. So yeah, throwing this in to get one level, unless your comic card set is already completed, you should not, absolutely not be doing this. Like unless your comic card is at the point where you have, seriously, barely any changes that you can make, you should not be doing this. I will never do this unless I have my set with like 40% all attack, 20% physical, 20% energy. You know what I'm saying? Unless I'm at that point, bro, where all of my stats are like damn near perfect, I'll never do this because it's so hard to reroll a card. And I have so many cards that I still need to reroll. I shouldn't even mention this, but only an idiot would do something like this. Yeah, only an idiot would use a premium comic card to do this. You know what I'm saying? Not even a will, just an idiot, okay? Because it costs a lot of money and also takes a lot of luck to get a premium comic card. So yeah, I shouldn't even mention this either, but CTPs should definitely be something that you don't use for this because look at this, you don't get anything for it. You know what I'm saying? You get more for just like a regular freaking ISO, but basically, basically the same. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, boys, that's just my tips. 
it's up to you guys what you want to do ultimately but you're better off doing something like this okay just get rid of all this shit because they're useless and yeah just just do this guys that's if you want to get rid of stuff out of your inventory this is a good way to do it and i'm saying you could keep some of these orange ones to use for people like let's say um what's your name again vicky icky vicky yeah because she actually benefits from having a lot of hp but besides that no no boys you should definitely not be using your isos you should just stick to using the books that they give you and getting rid of the nimble isos when you get them that's it so yeah that, those are my tips and tricks boys completely up to you guys what you want to do though we also have a comic card over here that i want to re-roll for you guys today so check it out man this scarlet witch card i've been trying to get skill cooldown on it for a hot minute you know what i'm saying because i want to put it in my set because as you all know i absolutely love scarlet witch so we're gonna re-roll it today a few times just so you guys can see and i also want to get your feedback because i'm planning like i've been planning to make a serious change to my comic card set and i gotta get your input boys so we're gonna re-roll this thing even though it has some good stats already but see like energy attack is beautiful but man could we have gotten could we have gotten the cooldown come on baby really crowd control come on come on baby please scarlet Whew, that is that is terrible okay come on come on baby whoo i get it oh my goodness i'm so sad i'm so sad guys come on come on come on wow we got the cooldown and energy defense oh my goodness okay we got it we got to re-roll it i'm just too sad come on come on oh my goodness like really man this is so sad come on baby Ooh, oh snap so quality two but we got the physical attack and the cooldown and dodge mm, this is this is this is tough man like if the quality was higher it would have been oh my goodness all right boys so here hear me hear me up boys i'm planning to put this card right this card and this card in my comic set right so these are the ones i'm planning to change right now i'm planning to change this loki card for the gwenpool card right i'm planning to change this card for the scarlet witch card and i'm also planning to change this card yeah finally gonna change this for the thor card hit me in the comments let me know if you think that is a good idea i'm really sad because i wanted a fully as guardian set but it'd be like that man i'm trying to make some power moves to get my stats looking a little bit better so leave your thoughts in the comments boys i'll catch you guys in the next one just wanted to share my thoughts with you guys really quickly on this world event thing since a lot of you guys have been hitting me up i also wanted to get your feedback on my comic card set because i haven't changed that thing in like a year at this point also boys 300 crystals for you man all you gotta do is be the 11th person to comment on this video yeah i'll catch y'all in the next one peace